The Sony RX100 Mark 7 is absolutely one of my favorite cameras released so far this year. Like Sony has really been crushing it and I'm very impressed with the last two big cameras they released, the Sony RX100 Mark 7 and the A6400, two fantastic cameras. Well, today what we're gonna talk about is my nine favorite tips and tricks of getting the RX100 Mark 7 set up to be just about the perfect travel camera. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So what we're gonna do, let's actually, let's set this down. We're gonna hook this up to the old MacBook over here so we can record the screen so I can show you what I'm talking about when I say it is a, just can be a phenomenal travel camera. Like I was using this basically as the only camera to my trip to Sony Condo a few weeks ago and it, it's just insanely good. Like it is an insanely good camera and can be, like I said, like a perfect video camera. So first up, I'm gonna show you how to do the different autofocus modes because unlike the A6400, the RX100 Mark VII can do Sony's brand new I detect autofocus in video. So let's go over here. Basically the way that you do all of the autofocus settings is you have to do it through like the still settings. So even though you wanna use it for video, you have to do it through the stills section. So you basically go down into AF1, you go to focus mode, continuous autofocus. But for video, I like doing continuous autofocus. You can choose different kind of ways to have the autofocus set up. So the big one is wide. That's where basically it will take the entire width of the screen, like what you can see, and it will prioritize whatever's closest to the lens in that way, unless you have eye and face on. We'll show that in a second. Zone is actually my favorite one, and that's where you can pick like bigger chunks of the screen to decide where you want it to be. Now, one of the tricks that I use on the A6400 to make sure I'm always in focus is I make sure that my face is in this zone area, and that's like, this is the one that I keep it in most of the time. And then we can come back over here. You also get center and that just keeps whatever is in the center of the camera in focus. Very useful if you're doing overhead shots like this, like this camera, the A6400 above us is currently set to center. Um, you can do flexible spot and this will go small, medium or large. And this is where you can just kind of like decide where you want the focus to be set inside of the camera. It actually, this is one, when I take thumbnails with these cameras, this is the setting I use. So you can also limit where it's gonna be and you can choose like what you want to see or what you don't wanna see. And we're not gonna use that too much. The big one is the face eye set, like the priority. Uh, so you can set face or eye priority so you can turn it on or off. And I keep this on all the time. Sony's face detection autofocus anymore is insane. Now you can, one of the new things that came out with the Sony a7R 4 that the A6400 and I believe the a7 III can I do is you can switch between human or animal. So if you wanna take like pictures of your dog, you can switch it to animal eye autofocus. That's crazy, like that's nuts. I love it. Uh, you can switch between whether the right eye or the left eye is selected and uh, you can show whether it'll actually show like there'll be like this little block um, with your eye in focus. Let's see if I can show you that. If I can get it to focus on me from the flip screen. You think we can? I don't know. Can I get my eye? See there, it's got my face. You can see that it's got my face in focus. Since it's in the gray, it's not white. That means it's not It's not tracking me. Come on, let us focus. Let us focus. Let's do it. And there you can see the eye. So you see that little block around my eye? That is the eye autofocus. That's nuts that it's so good that it can pick me up on the flippy screen on my GH5. That's insane. I didn't plan that, like that just happened throughout the video. So that's how you can get the really good eye autofocus while you're recording in video. Next up, if you're new to Sony cameras, uh, one of the main benefits of using a Sony camera is the picture profiles. Now, a lot of cameras have picture profiles. Uh, that's not new or specific to Sony, but what is nice is their specific picture profiles. Now, the RX100 Mark VII does have a few just amazing uh, settings like the picture profile one's my favorite, uh, but it also has S log two, which is their flat profile. And it has their HLG, their hybrid log gamma profile, uh, which is good for like really quick turnaround. So you just go, again, it's in the stills mode. You go over to color WB image processing one, you go down to picture profiles. You can turn it off picture profile one, which is mine is always set to picture profile two is just a, it's more for like their stills. Picture profile three is their like 709 profile. So it's kind of like what we're shooting on right now with the GH5, uh, another 709, but you get down into the flat profiles like the nines, the eights and the nines. So the eight is S log three. I wouldn't recommend S log three. S log three is their like flattest profile, but since this doesn't record in 10 bit, uh, it's not something that I would necessarily use. Nine 
is the S log three. Eight is the S log three. I guess they're both S log. I never used the log formats if you hadn't told. And we just lost our spot. Picture profile eight. And then picture profile 10 is the HLG two. Um, which you can switch to either 2020 color profile or 709 profile. So those are the picture profiles. Those are very important and it's a really easy way to get the good image quality straight out of the camera. And like I said, I always use picture profile one, but I know picture profile five is starting to be a very, very popular one. And that's the cinema one. We don't necessarily need to grade too heavily in post. It's kind of like the Cinelink D and the GH5. One of the really big things about the RX100 Mark VII and the new features is, is, that, is that it has an audio inject. So if this is your very first time with an audio inject, there are some things that you need to pay attention to if you want to record really good audio internal to the camera. And for this, we're going to go over into the movie settings and we're going to go over to audio recording. You want to make sure that's on, obviously. You want to go to the recording level. Now, I like to turn off wind noise. It gives it like a really tinny, it's super tinny if you uh, uh, leave the wind noise reduction on. So I never have it on. I like leaving the audio display on. So when you're like recording, you're in front of the camera, you can see what your levels are. And then you want to turn the recording level so you can see the you can see the little display there. Um, you want to turn it down as low as possible. Now, Sony does have some pretty good internal preamps, uh, but you want your microphone to be doing as much of the work as possible. So you want to make sure. Now, my general rule of thumb is you can see over there, you see that minus 12? Uh, minus 12 decibels is about where you want your peak. So like, what's up, everybody? So that was too high. That went over minus 12. So for like right now, we're the internal microphones. What's up, everybody? about an eight would be where I'd want to be. You can always, I find it easier to bring up audio and post because you can't save audio that's like too hot afterwards. I mean, if you're really nervous, just pay attention and keep it about negative 12 for your peaks. That will give you really nice, clean audio. It's it's incredible. And the, the preamps on this camera, it's like they were able to miniaturize the goodness of the preamps. It's, I know I've been speaking in hyperbole, but I love this camera. Okay, something else, if you are new to the RX100, if let's say you were like me and you had an RX100 Mark V and this is like your first time moving into the RX100 6 or 7, uh, you can also do tap to focus. So the first thing you do for that is you go over to the setup menu, you go over to setup three, touch operation off. Now I have it turned off in the camera. Uh, I, you know, when I'm messing with the camera cause I always am recording myself, I don't wanna like mess up where the focus is, but you turn it on. And then you can decide whether you want it to be the touch panel and the pad or just the pad only or the panel only. I only keep it to the panel because that's what's important. There's another quick way to do this where if you hit the function button, it comes up where you can turn on and off the, uh, the touch functionality right from the quick menu. And we'll talk more about the quick menu in a second because this is the best quick menu that Sony has ever come up with. But again, I don't want to jump ahead. But now when you do it, oh, I can't, hold on. Is it gonna work through the recorder? But now when you tap to focus, oh, it's not It's not gonna let me show you because we're recording externally, but um, at this point you'd be able to tap and it would focus. It works pretty well. This is not necessarily a tip or a trick. This is a recommendation from me. Um, I use polarized sunglasses all the time. I have very sensitive eyes. So when I'm outside, I have sunglasses on. Now what I've already done and what I would recommend you do, you I don't know if you can see it here, is I would recommend buying a screen protector for the back of this. Yes, it's probably important to buy a screen protector anyway to protect the screen since it's always like exposed. There's no way to protect it like a Canon camera where you flip the screen around and it's next to the body of the camera. Um, but this also, when you put a screen protector on it, it will let you still see the screen even if you're wearing sunglasses. Now that may seem like a small, like I spent like a few bucks to get this piece of glass, but it is insanely important. Like you cannot see the screen. And if you can't see the screen when you're recording, it, it's basically a useless feature. Like why pay the money for the flip screen if you can't use it, right? So buy a screen protector. It will help so much for being able to get the most out of your RX camera. And that's the RX7 and the RX6 too. The next thing is something that I talked about in my A6400 tips and tricks video, uh, but I, I've kind of changed my mind on it. I used to tell you to expose properly, use the aperture priority mode, and then dial in it, dial it in until the shutter speed is correct. Well, what I do now, uh, because motion blur is now way more important to me than shallow depth of field, I think shallow depth of field is like the least important thing you can look for in a camera. I now use shutter priority. So what shutter priority does is you select the shutter speed that you're looking for, like the shutter speed that you want the camera to stay at, and then it will do everything else to make sure that that stays true. So you see how the ISO is currently moving around, but the shutter speed staying the same. The aperture will also try to stay as wide open as possible if that's what you want. Um, but you see the ISO is changing because I have it set to auto ISO. Now, if I set the ISO to a specific number, 
then the shutter speed the one is going to be the one to uh, to try to change and you can see the shutter speeds changing with the light now if it's blinking like that like you're seeing right now that means it can't go anymore so it can't properly expose the image um, if you do that i would recommend like going back to auto iso or i'd go to auto iso um, because the iso you don't want to have the ISO go too high, but shutter priority, I think is the way to get your best image quality out of the camera. Because one of the negatives about the camera is it does not have a built-in ND filter like my Arc 100 Mark V. So you do kind of need to manage that exposure a little more. Um, and I think the best way to do it is with the shutter speed. Motion blur, much more important than aperture. Fight me. <laughs> Something else that's really nice on the Arc 100 Mark VII is the stabilization. I think the stabilization on this camera is some of the best that Sony has come up with. And I don't even use, you can use an app, like you download the app onto your phone, you run the footage through that, it will stabilize it a little more. I don't do that. I think the stabilization built into this camera is incredible. I mean, it's not FDR X3000 good, but it's pretty good. So to keep up with the stabilization, you go down here to movie three inside of the movie menu, you go to steady shot, you can do intelligent active, active standard. Basically what that means is the more you go up that line, the more it's gonna crop in on the image. Now, if you're shooting in 4K, you don't have the option of intelligent active. So I just keep it in active, uh, which crops in a little bit. The standard is just the lens stabilization. So the active gives you the best of both worlds. You will lose a little bit of the width, but I'd rather have a tighter shot than shaky footage because I don't like stabilizing with my editing software. You can also do that, but I never find it to be as good. The camera's gonna use its internal sensors to like kind of judge and use algorithms to kind of judge where to stabilize. Whereas I find that like Final Cut Pro, which is my editing software, doesn't do that as well. So active is what I would recommend and it's, it's pretty good. So we've been talking about how to do all this stuff. Now I'm gonna show you the cheap way and the quick way to do basically all of it. And that's the function menu we talked about earlier. The function, the quick menu of this camera is one of the best things that Sony's done. So you can see you got audio recording level, which you can change right from the quick menu. You've got the focus modes right from the quick menu. You've got the focus area. You've got the exposure compensation. Now this is if you wanna make sure like, so if you've got auto ISO, it will expose a little brighter, a little darker, depending on how you have that set up. I always set it to like zero. Auto ISO, metering mode, I never mess with metering mode. Exposure mode, you get your manual, your programmed auto, your aperture. Shutter, we'll keep it in shutter. Touch operation, white balance, picture profile, and steady shot. Like the quick menu on this camera. Sony, good job. Like people that complain about Sony's menu system not being able to find stuff quickly or easily, uh, this quick menu has just, it's put everybody to shame. Like it has everything you could want. Like everything a video shooter wants is in this quick menu. And I have no, the only thing that's not in here is the eye autofocus. And you can always use your customizable button. There's a customizable button on the back that I have set to ISO, which I will probably change now that I'm thinking about it to the face and eye autofocus section. Because like I said, ISO is right in there. It's nuts. It's awesome. And the last tip, and this is the best, most important tip of this camera. That's why we saved it for last. It is the temperature mode. So if you go to Sony's website, it will tell you this can record in 4K for five minutes at a time, but that's not true. This can record for 4K. I've gotten this camera to record in 4K for over 30 minutes inside of my studio. And that's, that's there are high end DSLRs that cannot record more than 30 minutes at a time. Let's show you how to do this. You go over to setup three, auto power off temp. If you turn this to standard, that gets you five minutes at a time of 4K. If you turn this to high, yep, you gotta acknowledge that it may make the camera hot. This will give you 4K for long periods of time. Now I've seen some videos where they will go for like an hour. I've seen other videos where they go for shorter amounts of time. I've been able to personally get it to over 30 minutes, like 34 minutes. That and the audio in jack are what make this such an incredible, incredible camera. Would I want a 1.8 at the wide? Yeah, absolutely. Would I want a built-in ND? Yeah, absolutely. But even what this is, this is the best, absolute best, most complete travel video camera ever made. Now I've used cameras like the NX80, which is basically like a professional camcorder version of this. And what that does is it gets you XLR and built in ND. This is incredible. This is incredible. And those are my eight or nine. I forget what we actually were. Best tips and tricks for setting up the Sony RX100 Mark VII. If you've got any of your own tips or tricks that you'd like to share with the community, leave a comment below. I mean, that's where we find out how to do the coolest and best stuff is by learning from each other. Thanks for watching.